So in this video, we will look at simple linear regression. When we have one scalar output that we want to predict based on a single input feature, then we can use a simple linear regression model. I'll be going pretty slow through the different steps because even though this model is simple, as it says in the name, it actually goes through the fundamental steps of any machine learning model. So we will explicitly define the model mathematically. We will choose the appropriate loss function for the model. We will then optimize the loss function with respect to the parameters of the model. So let's get into it. The figure on this slide shows the Olympic winning times for the men's 100 meter dash from 1896 to 2008. If you look closely, you'll see that the data is actually missing for the years 1914, 1940 and 1944. And you can maybe guess why that's the case. So given the data that we do have, could we actually predict the winning times uh, for these missing years? What would the winning times um, have been if the race took place? So we will try to answer this question using simple linear regression. Um, in this case, the input feature will be X, will be the year in which um, the race took place, and the output target will be Y, will be our winning time for that year. As a spoiler, what will actually happen is simple linear regression will basically try to fit a straight line through this data. We will first develop the mathematics of simple linear regression before returning to the example and seeing how good a fit our model is to this data. So a simple linear regression model predicts the output as a linear function of the input feature x. That basically means that if this is the output of our model, which we denote as f, and we have our inputs x, that the output of the model, given some setting of the parameters, will just be a straight line. In this case, our parameters are w0 and w1, which specifies um, this line. To choose w0 and w1, we are given a data set of previous input-output measurements. So this would be the first input-output pair, this would be the second input-output pair, and so on up to the nth input-output pair. So given this data, how do we choose w0 and w1? We need some way to measure how good or bad a particular setting of these parameters are given the data. So that brings us to the loss function. The loss function, which is also sometimes called the cost function, should tell us how good a particular setting of the parameters is. If we have a low loss, we know that we have a good set of parameters. And if the loss is high, then we know that we've got a bad set of parameters. The loss function is something that we should choose or design to match the problem that we're um, trying to solve. So let's say we're given a data set with just three points. This is our first training point, our second training point, and our third training point. And we're trying to fit a simple linear regression model to um, these three points. Let's say we first just guess some values for w0 and w1. We can look at the predictions of the model fx over the range of possible input values x. And this might look something like this. So this straight line is the predictions of our model over the whole input range x for this specific guess of our parameters w0 and w1. So if our model is presented with x1, then what it will do is it will predict this value here as the output of the, um, of the model. And similarly for x3, it will predict this value here. And for x2, if you go up here, it will predict this value here. So given those predictions, can we say how good this guess of W0 and W1 is for fitting this data? The bigger question is what loss function should we use to evaluate this? So one popular loss function for regression, probably the most common loss function for regression, looks as follows. The loss function J, which is a function of W0 and W1, is set equal to the sum, and what we're going to do is we're going to sum over all our data points from little n equal to one up to big N. In this case, that will be the three data points. And what we do is we take the real output, the target value y, and we subtract 
the prediction from our model for the corresponding input xn for our case of w0 and w1. And then what we do is we square the difference between the prediction from our model fx and the actual output that we get from the data set. So this would, on this graph, correspond to basically adding up the distances, the squared of the distances from the actual data point, say y1, to our prediction here. Um, this point would be f of x1, given our guess for w0 and w1. So this loss function is just the sum of the squared distances from our prediction to the actual data points. This loss function is called the squared loss, or sometimes the residual sum of squares. It also goes by other names, the squared error loss or the least squares criterion. And it all refers to this idea of taking the square of um, the difference between your prediction and the actual output that you're trying to predict. Intuitively, it makes sense that a good fit, a good guess for W0 and W1 will result in short lines here and would therefore give you a low loss value. Despite now having an appropriate loss function, we still don't know the best W0 and W1 beforehand. We just guess some values and we can evaluate them using the squared loss. But how do we actually choose them? We need to learn the base values for these parameters from the data which we have. Intuitively, you can think about it as wiggling W0 and W1 around so that the dashed red lines in the previous figure gives the shortest possible square distances. Stated more formally, we want to find the values for W0 and W1 that minimizes the loss J W0 W1. Let's call the unknown optimal values for W0 and W1. Let's call them W0 hat and W1 hat. And our goal is then to find the argmin for W0 and W1. When we plug those values into our loss, we want to find the settings for W0 and W1 that will give us the lowest loss. That's formally what we want to do. For some models and loss functions, this can turn out to be quite difficult. But luckily for simple linear regression, we can actually get an analytic solution for the optimal parameters. So we can think of the value of the loss j here as a function of w0 and w1. And you can actually plot that loss surface. So you have w0, for example, on this axis and w1 on this axis. And here we've got the value of the loss um, j. And what we want to do is to find the values of W0 and W1 at the minimum, basically the points um, that corresponds to the lowest point in this bowl um, representing the loss function. So on this figure, W0 hat could correspond to that value and W1 hat could correspond to this value here. So how do we find those values? What we're going to do is we're going to set the partial derivative of our loss function with respect to W0 to 0. And then we're going to do the same thing with W1 and then solve this set of equations jointly. So that's what we are going to do over the next few slides. To start out with, let's just briefly write out the loss a little bit more. So here we've got our loss function J, function of W0 and W1, and this is what we've had before. And then we just substitute in basically the equation for describing our model. So this was the model F of Xn, Given the two parameters, you can write that out and just write out what the model is doing. So here I've just quickly rewritten that equation. And what we'll do now is set the partial derivatives equal to zero. Let's start with W0. So we take the partial derivative of a loss with respect to W0. We've got a summation here. So we can take the partial derivative inside and then you can write it out like that. So the next step is to set the partial derivative equal to zero. So we just set this equation to zero um, as stated here. That means we can cancel out the two and the minus one by just multiplying by minus a half on both sides. You can reshuffle the terms like um, as on the slide. And then you end up with this equation here, which gives us the value for W zero if we're setting the partial derivative equal to zero. If you look at this closely, you'll actually see that this is just the mean value of our output variable y. 
and this is actually just the mean value of our input feature x. So you can actually write it out um, using the shorthand notation. So what we do is we denote the specific setting of w0 by using this hat here. And then we can use this bar notation to indicate um, that we're taking the mean. So this bar on top indicates where, that we're taking the estimated mean of, in this case, our output variable, and in this case, our input feature. And this gives us the optimal setting of W0. Next, we take the partial derivative of the loss with respect to W1. So very similarly to W0, we can take the partial derivative inside. And then in this first step, what we do is we take our optimal estimate for W0 and we substitute that into the equation for W1. So here we're uh, using equation 1 to go from this step here to this step here. And then you can go through the steps again and you end up with this equation. Next, we actually set the partial derivative equal to 0. And with a bit of manipulation, you can show that this is the result you're getting. So again, we use the hat to indicate this particular setting of W1. So we now have analytic equations, which tells us how to calculate the optimal solutions for W0 and for W1. And these particular settings are sometimes referred to as the least squared estimates. In this figure on the previous slide, this will correspond to the values giving us the lowest point in the loss surface J. Technically, setting the partial derivatives to zero isn't enough. This could actually have been the maximum of a function instead of the minimum. So we should also actually show that the second derivatives are greater than zero. And you can maybe just think to yourself why that's the case. And then also as an exercise, show that that is actually true for the simple linear regression model. In general, if this property holds that the, partial, the second um, derivatives are greater than zero for all the parameters, then you would call the loss function a convex loss function, which is indeed for simple linear regression the case. In some later videos, we will also look at strategies for optimizing loss functions which are non-convex. So let's quickly return to our example. What do we get when we calculate the optimal values for W0 and W1 on the 100 meter dash data? The dashed line on this slide indicates f of x for the optimal values w0 hat and w1 hat calculated on these um, blue points. And that actually looks quite reasonable. Let's look at a few particular points. So if you plug 1914 in as your x value, you will see that you get 10.9 seconds as the output. So 1914 is somewhere here and 10.9 seconds are somewhere around there. So that looks quite reasonable. The estimated winning time in 2012, according to the model, is 9.595 seconds. And you should note that 2012 isn't actually in our data set. So we can go and see how well does that this model actually predict this winning time that it never saw before. And Hussein Bolt ran the 100 meter dash in 2012 in 9.63 seconds. So the model is pretty good um, for this particular year. However, the model also has limitations. According to this model, the winning time in the year 2,592 will be 1.863 seconds. Um, I think that would be truly impressive. So that wraps up our discussion of simple linear regression. And as I said in the introduction, it actually goes through many of the fundamental steps that we will follow for any of the more advanced machine learning models we'll look at next. In the next few videos, we're going to build up to multiple linear regression, where instead of a single input feature, you actually have multiple input features from which you want to predict a scalar output.